Hello, my name is Julia Janoulis and I'm the Learning Experience Designer with Credential Engine. Today, I'm introducing a new data type, Rubrics, which you can now publish to the registry. Rubrics enable clear assessment of skill levels. For assessing learning outcomes and evaluating job performance, Rubrics provide transparent information about what a person knows and can do. The CTDL data model for Rubrics makes this valuable assessment information human and machine readable and provides an open standard for connecting learning, skills, and jobs. CTDL rubrics are versatile and can be used not only for assessing a person's skills, but also for assessing organizational capabilities and gauging the quality or suitability of products, services, and more. You can publish your rubrics as linked open data in CTDL and reuse rubrics that are published by others. For the agenda for this demo video, I'll first show you how to upload your rubrics to the publisher. This includes filling out your bulk upload spreadsheet and using the bulk upload tool for submission. Then I will guide you through the process of approving data for publication and show you how to access the published data in the Finder. So we'll begin this demo with uploading your rubrics. So to begin uploading your rubrics, you'll navigate to the publisher. I'm in the sandbox, which is our testing environment for the purpose of this demo, but the link to the publisher in production is very similar to this link. It's apps.credentialengine.org slash publisher. Once you're logged into the publisher, you'll see this navigation across the top. Select the add new bulk upload dropdown from the top and click on the white link titled rubrics underneath bulk CSV upload. This will take you to the rubric section of the bulk upload tool. And once you're on the bulk upload tool, you'll see select your organization at the top of the page. If you're only associated with one organization in our system, your organization will be automatically selected here and you will not need to select anything from this dropdown. But if you're associated with multiple organizations in our system, you will need to select the appropriate organization from the dropdown. I'm going to select the organization I will be uploading data for as I'm associated with multiple. As you scroll down the page, you'll see a brief introduction with an overview of the steps to upload new rubrics, as well as the steps to update existing rubrics, should you need to edit any rubric data that you've already uploaded to the publisher. You'll also see this print button over here where you can print the steps to bulk upload should you need them. Just be sure to expand the sections that you need first so that those are captured in the printed PDF. You'll also see this contact us button and that will send us an email should you need help with the bulk upload tool. Scrolling further down the page, you'll see this equity benchmark model down here, which was developed based on the final report of the equity council. You'll see which properties on the bulk upload are part of which tier of the equity benchmark model based on the signal bars icon that is next to each property. Tier one properties are represented by a signal bars icon with one filled bar, tier two properties, display two filled bars, and tier three properties display three filled bars. Moving down the page, you'll see step one, complete your organization. If you expand this My Organizations tab, you'll see this edit button where you can make any changes to your organizational information. You'll also see your organization, your organization's CTID, and your organization's addresses below. To point to your organization, your book upload spreadsheet, for example, you'll include your organization's CTID listed here. Moving on to step two, this is where you'll select your properties to be included in your template. So you'll notice we have it selected to upload new rubrics for the purpose of this demo, but you can also update existing rubrics once the data is in the registry. You'll see this required properties tab, which expands, and you'll see these properties are part of our minimum data policy and have been pre-selected for you. So they'll automatically be included in your spreadsheet when you download it. Since these properties are part of our minimum data policy and required to publish to the registry, they are also part of our tier one equity benchmark data. So you'll see the signals icon with one bar next to each property. And to run through the required properties quickly, you'll see external identifier, name, description, type, subject web page, publisher, and language. Type allows you to upload rubric, rubric criterion, rubric level, and criterion level all in one spreadsheet to build out your rubric. 
publisher does require a CTID for a published organization. As I mentioned, these required properties are automatically selected. There's no way to unselect these properties, so no need to worry about missing them from your spreadsheet. And looking at the minimum data, you'll see we have a property name in this column. We have a description of the property in this column, as well as an example of what data goes into that property. And we have the special data requirements on how to format the data in the spreadsheet. Now that we've gone over the required properties, we're going to go over some properties that are past our minimum data policy and are available for you to include in your rubrics upload. Expanding this tab, we have audience level type, we have audience type, publisher name, some subjects, occupation type, has rubric criterion, has rubric level, has scope. We have some date created, date modified right here. But you'll see each property has a description of what goes in that field as well as an example, just as the required properties did. There are some special data requirements with these properties. For example, if you keep scrolling, um, you'll see that instructional program type and occupation type and subjects should be a pipe separated list of values. These properties also have a character limit. You'll notice that none of the properties past the minimum required data have been selected, so you have the ability to scroll through and select additional properties to include in your spreadsheet. I'm going to check off some of these properties so that they're included in my spreadsheet when I download it. Moving on to more properties that are past the minimum data policy, you'll see we have a lot underneath this optionals properties tab that you're more than welcome to check out and add to your spreadsheet. And once you've selected all of your properties, you'll scroll down to step three to download your template. Be sure to include sample data and include instructions so that these will be included in the template for your reference and then click the download template spreadsheet button. And you'll see that the template will download to your desktop as a CSV file, and you can convert the CSV to an Excel doc or Google Sheet to easily input your data. So I'm going to go over to the template I downloaded. I've opened the template in Google Sheets to start inputting my data. You'll see sample data and instructions have been included in rows two and three, so you can reference them in the spreadsheet and you don't have to keep going back to them. You'll see in row one that all of these headers were properties that were included in my spreadsheet. The minimum required data is included as well as any other properties that I've checked off. I'm just going to tab over to my completed spreadsheet um, and I do want to point out that in this completed spreadsheet, you'll see we have rubric criterion, um, rubric level, and criterion level as types. And these external identifiers in column A are referenced in column N, has rubric criterion, and column O has rubric level. Rubric criterion and rubric level rows reference the external identifiers of the criterion level in column P has criterion level. So once you're done filling out this template, you will delete column A and rows two and three, the sample data and instructions. These need to be removed before upload or you'll receive an error. I have already deleted the sample data and instructions as well as column A, from the spreadsheet, so the spreadsheet's good to go. It's important to note to save the file as a CSV file, as that is the file extension that works with our system. So I am going to go back to the bulk upload tool over here. Continuing down the page from where we left off, Step four has some helpful tips and tricks as you're inputting your data in your spreadsheet, but I've already inputted my data, so I will upload my data under step five. To upload your data, you'll select choose file, and select the template that you wish to upload. Select preview, 
and this will replicate your spreadsheet. You'll see the properties as your column headers and all of the data you've entered. You can use this as an opportunity to do a final quality check before uploading. Um, and when you're done, you'll click Save this data to the publisher. And once you click that button, the system will give you an estimated upload time. And once your data has been uploaded, you'll get this green success bar that says your data has been uploaded. If you keep scrolling, you'll see the upload results. Now that we've uploaded rubrics, the next step is to approve the data in the publisher. So to do this, you'll scroll down to step six right here, which has a link to your organization summary page. You can click on the link and you'll be redirected to the summary page in the publisher. So this is where you can see all of the data that you've uploaded to the publisher. You'll see a tab for rubrics right here. And you can see all of the rubrics that you've uploaded. You can see we have a name, a CTID, and the status of each rubric. So you'll select the rubrics tab, as I just did, select all, and click this approve all selected items button at the bottom of the screen. Clicking approve all selected items lets the publishing team know that you've approved your data to be published. They will go in and do a quality check of the data you've approved and then publish your data to the registry. And once your data is published, you'll be able to see it in the Finder. And I will show you what a rubric looks like in the Finder. So this is the Coherent Program and Curriculum Design Rubric. You'll see there's a description, a subject web page, a life cycle status, and then the rubric at the bottom. And that is how to upload rubrics, approve your data to be published, and view your published data in the Finder. Thank you for viewing this demonstration. And if you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to contact the publishing team at publishing at credentialengine.org.